What's up guys? All right, Jack here. Today I'm gonna to be going over all my tips, techniques, and the secrets that I use for catching stock trout at local reservoirs here in California, and they can be used throughout the country for catching your local trout. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go over everything from rods, reels, lines, hooks, uh, the weights, the swivels I use, everything um, to catch these trout from shore, okay? So for a rod, I like to use an ultralight to a medium light, seven foot, um, with the shortest I'm gonna use from shore is usually about a six foot rod. To, and uh, for line pound test, usually you're looking for something that's in that two to six pound test, max of like four to eight would be the uh, heaviest I'm gonna be using for when I'm fishing for trout. That's gonna give me plenty of casting distance for the light line and the light lures that I'm gonna be using. And uh, everything else, so this here is a uh, ugly stick. I've had it for a couple years now. It uh, holds up great to all the trout here from little stalkers to I've even caught in some bigger eight pound rainbows and uh, browns on them. So great rod right here is just the uh, ugly sticks. And they hold up well. As far as a reel selection, this one varies a little bit bigger or different. Um, you can go as small as a 500 size reel to up to about a 2000 size reel. Ideally, I like to fish when I'm fishing from the bank in that 500 to 1500 size reel if I'm fishing a reservoir. The 500s I usually save for when I'm fishing creeks and stuff like that where everything's real tight and compact. And even for rods, I'll use something different for that, which I do another video in the future if you guys are interested on uh, creek fishing. But for lakes, I like to keep it in the 1,000 to 1,500 size reel. That's gonna load up plenty of line, appropriate size line for that matter, and gonna get the job done. I'll have links for all this stuff down below and the exact sizes and stuff that I'm using. For line selection, I like to go with four pound test. It's my go-to. If the water is super clear, I will downsize to some two pound test. Um, if I'm up in like the Sierras and some of the lakes and stuff like that, I will go another two pound test, especially if the fish are line shy. But your standard four pound Maxima Ultra Green is gonna get the job done 90% of the time. If I do have some bigger fish around, I'll go up to six pound. Occasionally I'll go to eight, but usually if I'm going up to eight, it's because I'm throwing lures or something like that for some bigger fish. But for just your standard stocking fish that are in that 12 to 18 inch range, max, I'm gonna be going with the, uh, the four pound test. It's gonna get the job done as long as your drag is set right. Now for gear that you're gonna need to buy. Hooks, I like to use just your standard bait holder hooks. And my go-to size for that is the size eight. Um, I usually stock it, keep in stock with me when I'm out on a trip size 10s, 8s, and then I also carry some 6s. So just a plethora of different sizes, but usually the 8s are gonna be my go-tos and they're gonna get the job done 90% of the time. What those look like, just in case you're not familiar, they're just tiny little hooks, just like that. And put your bait on there, cast it out, and perfect hook set and those little 12 inch fish's uh, jaw. Nothing too big, nothing too small, and uh, they don't swallow the eights as often as they do like the, the smaller tens and twelves, but the eights are perfect for that. And then the sixes are small enough to get in the, or sometimes too big to get in the smaller fish's mouth. So I like the eights, it's my personal preference. To each their own. The other thing you're gonna need is some weights. I stock different size swivel, or uh, split shots here. What a split shot is, is just a, a little weight. It's got a little uh, mouth on it. And what you do with that weight is you just take it and pinch it on the line and then finish it off the pinch with a pair of needle nose pliers. And then I'll pinch it down hard. Uh, as a kid, probably did about a hundred and thousand of those things. Uh, you can also just bite down on it and uh, secure it to your line, but your dentist will get mad at you probably. So you don't want to chip a tooth on a fishing trip and ruin it. So use a pair of pliers. That's what you have them for. Another uh, type of uh, sinker that I like to keep with me are uh, sliding either egg sinkers or my preference are the little bullet sinkers. This here is just a uh, about quarter ounce bullet sinker. 
and then I got some smaller uh, 16th of an ounce. These ones are my preference right there. Super light, even if fish does get a hold of the weight itself on that setup, he's not gonna really feel that 16th of an ounce. It's pretty light, so. And then you need some swivels. Uh, size 12 swivels, just standard, uh, any swivel will do that you got that are super small. And uh, some beads, and that'll be the uh, last thing you're gonna need for all these setups I'm gonna show you. And then uh, assortment of bobbers. So let's go through all these setups. We're gonna start with probably my favorite setup and the one that I use for 90% of my fish. And that is just a hook tied to your main line. I use, like I said, that size eight. I'm just using these for demonstrations so you guys can see it. And then about 12 inches from that to 18 inches, I will split, put on a split shot. Just pinch that split shot on there and then I put my bait on the hook, either that power bait or a worm or something like that and cast that out. And this is gonna be used for catching, I would say 90% of the trout that I fish for from the bank are gonna be used with this setup. Super simple to use, effective and catches fish. So definitely easy to teach your kids how to do this one. Teach them the knot, put on the swivel and you're good to go. Another technique, especially if you have some fish that are a little bit more finicky is the sliding sinker setup. And what you do for that is you're gonna slide a weight onto your main line. Then you're gonna put a bead. That bead is just to protect your knot. It's not a necessity. I like to do it just for security purposes. Add that little uh, swivel. Like I said, I use a size 12. This one's a little bit larger for demonstrations. And what that does is it just slides down there. And if you get a bite, it'll move up and freely down your line, your weight will, and your fish won't notice it. And then tie on a leader. I just use some of my main line as leader usually. And I usually go from 12 inches to 36 inches uh, on my leader length. So depending on how far up I want my bait to suspend, so if I'm using power bait, this is a technique that I do use quite frequently, but especially if I want that bait to suspend pretty high is this technique. And if I do it three feet, that power bait will be floating off the bottom about three feet in perfect visibility for that trout swimming along to see it and check it out. The scent hopefully will bring them in and they'll take a bite out of it. Another technique that I use if I want to suspend a bait below the surface but not have it resting on the bottom, especially if I'm using worms or something like that, or crickets, um, I will use a bobber setup. The most basic way to do that is just your standard spring lock bobbers. So you have a spring on the bottom of that and it's got, it moves up and down. What you do is you take your spring, you pull it back, you put your line in there and twist it once or twice around the stem of that. And then it's pretty much staying in place. Doesn't move unless you really yank on it, but a fish wise, it's not gonna move for you. And it'll be able to suspend that three, four feet under the surface of the water, suspend your bait. Another technique, especially if you need to suspend that worm or something, let's say you wanna be 10 feet down. Well, this technique, you can't have that 10 feet down because it's not gonna be able to cast very well. So anything over like six feet down, I'm usually gonna use a sliding sinker at that, or sliding bobber. And what the sliding bobber does is you need a bobber stop. So usually they come with the bobbers, but you get a bobber stop. You get a bobber that has a hole in the middle of it and it just slides up and down your line. You put the bobber stop on, you put a bead, and that bead is just to keep the bobber from sliding over the bobber stop, and then put the bobber on. And then attach a little weight to the bottom, and then attach your hook below that. I usually, from the weight to the hook, I got usually 12 inches or so, and then that just gets it so that the fish doesn't see the weight right away. And then you cast that out, and this will essentially be resting against your sinker, and this could be the little bobber stop, because all it is is a little piece of nylon material can be reeled in all the way into the eye of your, through the eyes of your rod and even onto your reel itself. So if you want this thing suspended, let's say 20 feet under the surface, you could just measure it out 20 feet and then reel that line in and cast like you would normally cast and have this bobber pretty much sink all the way down 
to that depth that you want to target uh, for those fish, especially if you got like steeper banks or something like that and you want to get that bait way down there but you don't want it necessarily on the bottom, this is a great technique for that. As far as worms, uh, the old night crawlers work great, but one of my favorite are the big red worms. These things uh, come in like a 30 pack and they are, in my opinion, a little bit more effective than the night crawlers because they are a little bit smaller than the night crawler and you don't have to pinch them in half and they still wiggle around because they haven't been pinched in half. They're still pretty active usually and they catch a lot of fish. So I love the little, uh, the big red worms, but also usually I'll have some night crawlers with me, especially if uh, I run out of those. They come in a 30 pack, but I've had some fantastic days where you do run through all those, but then you just have your standard night crawlers as well. So those are the techniques that I use um, for that, for the worms is the bobber usually if I don't want it land on the bottom. And then for the sliding egg sinker and the split shot, I will usually put on some power bait. So favorite colors for power bait, uh, there's hundreds of colors out there and scents that Berkeley has made, but chartreuse is always a good one. And then I usually keep some rainbow on me as well when I'm fishing, but my favorite color is the chunky cheese gulp garlic scented power bait. Um, this is my go-to color. It's uh, and I think it's probably my go-to is it matches I think the pellets that they eat pretty well. In my opinion, it, it definitely catches more fish than most of the other colors in my experience. But uh, try for yourself. Try the different colors. I know a lot of guys like the pink. Um, guys love the rainbow. The chartreuse is also a really popular color. But try your own colors out. Find your own favorite and uh, make sure you comment down below what your favorite is as well. What's your favorite color power bait if uh, that's one of the techniques you use. So thanks for watching everyone. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see the future videos. I'm going to be coming out with some other ones. Uh, I'm going to do a trolling setup uh, video. I'm also going to do a bank fishing uh, with lures video here in the near future. So make sure you subscribe, click the like button, and comment down below what's your favorite way to catch uh, trout off the bank. Tight lines.